Well, I mean, World Blues is kind of born out of a out of a Zito idea, um, you know, and it just tackles. It's got a little social commentary about the state of the world. You know, we tend to hit on that a bit in the themes of Royal Southern Brotherhood songs because uh, it's something everybody can relate to. Song World Blues. That's a song that I wrote. Uh, you know, I wrote on my own. Uh, was trying to, um, you know, I try to write songs based on uh, whatever's happening at the time. But I'm also trying to think about the project and the, the group. And uh, you know, it's different than maybe writing a song for my own album. And to me, uh, you know, one of the special things about Royal Southern Brotherhood is that we have three lead vocalists. So I thought, well, we need a good like a good funky blues song, something that's up, that moves, that everybody can sing on, you know, that we could do some harmonies on. And um, so I, you know, I, uh, I came up with, uh, with World Blues. The idea behind it was that we traveled a lot and we see a lot. And you know what, man? Everywhere we go, people are the same. It doesn't really matter. I mean, people are struggling or they're having a tough time or they're just getting by or they're making the most of it, you know? And that was kind of my idea was, you know, like, uh, blues is not just, even though maybe the term or the music's been found in the United States, I mean, the struggle of life is available anywhere on the planet, right? Rock and Roll as a Child of Rhythm and Blues is actually a song that I had written um, well, maybe 10 years ago and it was written to be part of another brother's record. But it didn't make it, uh, it didn't make the cut, it didn't make it to the record. So I took it and recorded it myself. And it's actually, I had some help putting it together by my, my nephew Ivan and Nick Daniels on bass and Willie Green, the drummer for the Neville Brothers, you know, and it's like because the song became what it became after, you know, it was my general idea, but it certainly wouldn't have came to fruition like it did without those guys' help, so they're part of the, 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 the copyright of the song as well. Groove On is a song that I wrote on my iPad. It's just, I had a groove. I do a lot of writing in the back of the van. I'm a garage band. And um, Devin had got a hold of it. I, I sent some ideas to all the guys. And one morning he woke up and he said, hey man, you know, he goes, I really love what you and your wife have. And you know, he, 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 he sees what the love that we have. And I wrote a song about it. It's called Groove On. And uh, he used the groove, and, and the, the, the title was just a title that I thought was well, kind of groovy, so I put groove on, you know, just in my thing, but he used that title. And so it's, it's actually a love story about my wife and I that he saw from an outside point of view. We were all sending each other music, and I heard this piece, and nobody had really talked about it. And Charlie and his wife are one of the closest couples I've ever witnessed, and they're both aces. They're just sweet, sweet, sweet sweethearts. And uh, it's like, man, I want to write a song from Charlie's perspective to his wife, you know? And so I just kind of got in his mindset and wrote the song. And in the, uh, you know, in the part of the song, it says, Charlie to Tracy, it says, you know, you're my heart, my soul, my blood. Here he is, just what you've been seeking. Yeah, mama, here it is. What you've been dreaming about when you're sleeping. Girl, here yeah, here it is, is, uh, you know, just one of those funky New Orleans, back home, uh, Detroit a la Atlanta, you know, seeing that I'm the drum guy. I could say that, but it's, uh, it's just a real funky tune, and it's just what we're just saying to people, here it is. Here it is. Oh, that's a good one. That's just uh, a lot of the songs came from sound checks. Um, 
Here it is is a really good example of one where I just started going bang, bang, just started hitting it. You know, uh, Mike started playing a riff. Enrico came in on drums and he kind of like didn't hear where I started and came in in a weird place. And so Cyril started recording it and he sang into it and we were all listening to it. And then we started arguing about where the one was. I mean, there was like a two week discussion of where's one. <laughs> so we figured it out and uh, that's how that song was born. Like, like uh, about three or four, maybe about half of the CD was probably born at Soundcheck. I should've known, should've known, should've known, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should've known right from the start. Should've known was a was a kind of an R and B. I wanted a real kind of R and B throwback ballad, kind of like a I don't know, in the spirit of a Dock of the Bay or a Stand by Me, just a real kind of throwback. I, I'm real influenced by Memphis Soul. Motown, Curtis Mayfield, Stax, like all that Stax stuff. That's just really, at the end of the day, I listen to all kinds of music, but that's really my bag, is soulful singing and, and guitar playing. Come on. Get the map where we going. I just Let's ride. Well, that's uh, something that I, I look at as the answer to prayers because I got the chance to be in the studio with my son, Omari Neville, and he and I actually wrote that song together. And it's basically a um, homage to uh, bikers, to Harley lovers. Uh, that particular song is a kind of result of my son and I just getting together and experimenting with different styles of music and rock was the one that he pointed to me. He said, man, you're a rock star, you're a rocker. So let's put some rock around you. And that's where that song came from. The song Trapped is pretty cool. It, it, the genesis of it was a guitar riff that I had come up with at Soundcheck. It was just kind of this rolling, almost Hendrix-y, kind of uh, lick that starts to tune out. And um, I don't even know where we were, but I remember um, kind of having the foresight enough to get the iPhone and just at the sound check and just kind of record the riff. And we all do that actually. We'll be on tour, we'll be at sound check, everybody's got their iPhone. You hit the voice memo, you record a riff or a jam. And those end up being fleshed out, turned into to the song. Um, so we did that one, and then uh, we were on tour in Norway. We had a few days off. We rented a really cool studio, full of gear, and we just, for the first time in the band's history, we sat in a circle and said, what do you got? What do you got? And I was like, man, I got this riff, you know? And that was really a special song for the record because my riff, and I had a few lyrics at that point by the time we got to Norway, and then, you know, I think Mike added a chord, and Jan Rico added a stop time, and everybody kind of threw their bit into the recipe and the song came out and it's that's that's a real fun one. I can't wait to play it live. She's not the lady. That's a nice collaboration of the band. I like it because it's like an old R&B tune that's fresh and new. It makes you feel like you're listening to the OJs at the same time. It's got a modern feel that can, you can relate to. And Cyril just sings his, I mean, you know, he's Cyril Nelp. God, that's, that's the one where you just listen to over and over. You know, I don't know if y'all know this. Sing along with Cyril Neville. You sound like the best singer in the world when you sing along with him. There's something about him. He's never, he's never pushes. You sing with him, you think, oh, I could do this, and then you go into the gig and try to sing his song, and it don't sound the same. <laughs> that is the genius of Cyril Neville. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise the child. Too many uh, It Takes a Village is a song that I wrote uh, for the album. Uh, you know, I'm a father, and I have five children. So we have a large family, and uh, uh, everyone is working together to kind of raise our children, you know, uh, between the ex-wife, 
wife and grandmothers and you know and I travel and there's a big family we have a very big family and um, you know we've we all heard the term you know it takes a village to raise a child and I thought you know it really does and we work so hard at my house and with our our big family everyone works so hard to try to take care of these kids you know and, and, uh, my wife's a school teacher and she teaches uh, it's an inner city school and it's very unfortunate that there are not always people working as hard to try to take care of these kids. Love and Peace is uh, an ideal that we wrote in Europe and uh, we, we loved it because you know the groove is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the chorus is more of a, just a, a driving rock group. So, yeah, I love that. That was, that was the one that, um, the serial brainchild of the words, love and peace, that's what the band is about. been you know trying to achieve this sound uh, by listening to one another and playing with one another and letting each personality kind of find its place and breathe you know and it's like a um, you know like any good relationship or marriage or anything like that uh, if it was worth its weight you know five or ten years down the line is better once we've really gotten to, to know each other you know uh, and I think that's where it's at now. It's really developed naturally. Heart, soul, blood as one word, heart, soul, blood, as it being one entity, one idea. Um, because we put our heart and our soul and our blood into our band and our music and this record.